Okay, 7.4 deals with special right triangles. Now you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a missing side in a right triangle, but if you can identify it as a special right triangle, meaning a 45, 45, 90, or there's another one that we're gonna learn here in a few minutes called a 30, 60, 90, there are some shortcuts, some cheats to solving for missing sides with these two types of triangles. Now before we get into that, there's something that I want to go over with you quickly. And that's multiplying or dividing by a radical. Now it's very, simply, it's very simple to multiply it by a radical. Let's say you have uh, 3 times the square root of 2. Now that's not hard at all. You get 3 times, there's actually a 1 in front of this. And it's 3 times 1, which is 3, and then the square root of 2 just kind of stays along. But then, let's say you had the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Well, you have a square root. 2 times 2 is 4. And then you know that you can reduce the square root of 4, which is 2. Multiplying by a radical is not that hard. Dividing by a radical is very difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because you cannot have a radical, meaning a uh, square root symbol, in the denominator of a fraction. It is, that's called improper. Um, on your ACTs, on your tests, on your SATs, you will never see a radical in the denominator. You're going to see a reduced radical form. Uh, much like at the beginning of the chapter, we dealt with reducing or simplifying radicals. There's also a way to get the radicals from out under the denominator. Let's say you have to divide 3 by the square root of 2. Now, you cannot leave it as this answer. That is not okay. So what you have to do is figure out a way to get rid of this radical. Well, now you tell me. The opposite of addition is subtraction. The way that you get rid of an addition problem is by subtracting it. The way that you get rid of a multiplication problem is by dividing it. The way that you get rid of a radical, the way that you make it go away, is by squaring it or multiplying it by itself. So if I want to get this square root of 2 to go away, I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 2. But what I do to the denominator or the bottom, I have to do also to the top. So watch this. When I multiply straight across, I get 3 square root of 2, 3 times the square root of 2. And then on bottom, I get 3 square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, which the square root of 4 is 2. And so now, even though this is a big bulky fraction, I still can accept this as, an, as a proper answer as opposed to 3 divided by the square root of 2. The reason we need to go over this is because to solve a couple of these different uh, special right triangles, you do have to know how to multiply and divide by radicals. So let's take a look at the 45, 45, 90 first. Now in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is square root of 2 times the length of the leg. If you're given a length of 1, you can just multiply 1 by the square root of 2 and you're given the hypotenuse. You'll notice here that in order to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you simply multiply by the square root of 2. Now I want you to write this down in your notes. Very important because when we get into our homework later, and not necessarily this section, but at the end of this chapter, when you're given multiple triangles and you're told to solve those right triangles, it's simple to look under, if, if you can identify a triangle as 45, 45, 90, it's easy to look under your notes and say, oh, to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, I simply multiply by the square root of 2. But let me ask you this. What if I wanted to go backwards? What if I wanted to go from the hypotenuse to the leg? I'm doing the opposite function, or I'm going in the opposite direction. Well, that means that I would do the opposite operation. What's the opposite or inverse of multiplication? It's division. So if I was given the hypotenuse, let's say it was 3, like the problem that we just did. If I was given a hypotenuse of 3 and I needed to find the leg, I could divide by the square root of 2, and I would find the length of my leg of the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Having these two written down is going to save you a lot of time. It's faster. Now let's actually solve some of these. If you look at example 1, we already identify it as a 45, and if this is 45 and this is 90, that means that this has to be a 45. So, 
If you look at this triangle, what information did they give me? Well, they gave me the length of a leg. And it says, find the length of the hypotenuse. So, if I want to find the hypotenuse and I'm given a leg, notice this, we're given a leg, we want to find the hypotenuse, I can simply multiply by the square root of 2. So, if I take the length of my leg and multiply it by the square root of 2, I have 8 square root of 2. Not overly complicated. Let's look at the next one. I want you to look at this triangle very, very uh, quickly. And what do you notice right away? You might notice that there are no angle measures. Yes, we're given this as a 90, but we're not told what either of these two are. But we are told that this leg and this leg are the same. Now, there's only one triangle that is a right isosceles triangle. Isosceles meaning these two angles or these two sides are the same. If these two sides are the same, then these two angles are the same. And if you take 180 degrees, which is what the inside of a triangle adds up to, and you subtract this angle, okay, 180 minus 90 gives you 90. These two angles have to add up to 90, but they are also the same angle, like this, x and x, which means that 2x equals 90, divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 45. You can see that because this is a 90 degree triangle and these two sides are congruent, that these two angles also have to be congruent. Now you'll notice here that we're told to find the length of the hypotenuse. Well, they give me the leg, and when I'm given the leg and want to find the hypotenuse, I simply multiply by the square root of 2. This one's not as simple because I'm not multiplying a whole number by the square root of 2. I'm actually multiplying a complex number by the square root of 2. But I don't do anything different. 3 square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Think of this in terms of like terms. You have a 3, and in front of this square root of 2, you have a 1. Well, 3 times 1 is 3. The square root of 2 and the square root of 2 are also like terms. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 can be reduced to actually 2. So don't, don't add these or just plug them together and get 32. What we're doing here is we are multiplying these two together. This is 3 times the square root of 4. Well, if the square root of 4 is actually 2, I'm still multiplying 3 times 2, which is 6. The length of my hypotenuse is 6. Now, this might not seem overly complicated. In fact, it's not. A 45, 45, 90 is simple. But go to the next page. The next page, we're told we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this is a little bit more complicated because this has uh, a lot more to do. This is a little bit tougher. Uh, we're not given congruent sides like we are with a 45, 45, 90, where Regardless of which side we're given, we can just multiply by the square root of 2 or divide by the square root of 2. But with a 30, 60, 90, we're actually given three different sides. We have the 30 leg, which is across from my 30 degree angle. We have a 60 leg, which is across from our 60 degree angle. And we have our hypotenuse, which everybody knows is across from the 90 degree angle. So we actually have to write down some steps or some cheats depending on which leg we are given. So, what I'd like you to do is write down this. If you are given the 30 degree leg and told to find the hypotenuse, what we can do there is multiply by 2. Well, what if you're given the 30 leg and told to find the 60 leg? you can multiply by the square root of 3. Now we can mix this up and change it around. Um, let's say you're given the 60 leg. And you're told to find the hypotenuse. You can simply multiply by 2 over the square root of 3. And that's a tough problem to do. It'd be easier to go from the 60 to the 30 and then the hypotenuse, and you'll see why. Because when you're given the 60 leg and told to find the 30 leg, 
you simply divide by the square root of 3. And you'll notice that that's the exact opposite, the opposite, the opposite operation of going from the 30 to the 60. Going from the 60 to the 30, we're going backwards. We do the opposite operation. Well, then, let's say that you're given the hypotenuse, and you're going to the 30 leg. All you do is divide by 2. Hopefully you can read this writing. Again, let's say you're given the hypotenuse and you're going to the 60 leg. You can multiply by the square root of 3 over 2. Now, depending on which leg you're given will determine you know, how you solve these. Uh, these little cheats, though, will make it a lot easier for you in terms of identifying what you're given and where you're going. For example, if you look at example two, we're told to find the value of the variables. But the first thing you want to do is identify what you're given. And in the first problem of example two, I can see that I'm given a 30, 60, 90, but I'm told that this leg is 90. Now, what's most important to me is identifying which leg I have. Is this leg the 30 leg, the 60 leg, or the hypotenuse? And the way that we identify it is figuring out which angle it's across from. Is it across from the 30, across from the 60, or across from the 90? Well, hopefully you see that across from that leg is the 60 degree angle. That is the 60 leg. So, what I can do is I can immediately come up here and I'm told that if I'm given the 60 leg and I want to find the hypotenuse, I can simply multiply by 2 square root of 3. Well, y is the hypotenuse, so I can use this method to solve for y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take y equals the 60 leg times 2 over the square root of 3. Now, just like any other fraction, when we multiply, we multiply straight across. 2 times 9 is 18, and we have the square root of 3. But a little warning should be going off in your mind. Can you leave your answer like this? No, you cannot, because it is improper. We can't leave a radical in the denominator. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to get this square root of 3 out of there. Well, I showed you at the beginning of these notes. Hopefully you remember it. Hopefully you wrote it down. The way that we get rid of that radical is by multiplying by it. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Now, just like we did a second ago, we're going to multiply straight across. 18 times the square root of 3 is just 18 square root of 3. But the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Well, the square root of 9 is actually a whole number. So I get 18 square root of 3 over 3. Now, and you'll notice that this is a very long problem. Mathematically, it's not hard. It just takes a lot of steps. Now I want you to notice, can this be reduced? Is this a fraction that we can reduce? And I hope you see that 18 over 3 can be reduced. We can't do anything with that square root of 3. Please don't think that because 3 and 3 are the same number that we can reduce that, reduce that to the square root of 1. You can't do that. Square root and a whole number are two different numbers. They're not like terms, so you can't combine them. But 18 and 3 are, which means we can take 18 and divide it by 3 and get 6. 18 divided by 3 is 6. The square root of 3 just stays there. And so we've solved for y. Now, I know that took a lot of work. I know that was tough. But hopefully you see that that wasn't too hard. And maybe you want to write down those steps, take your time, go over this problem a few more times, and that way you can really see how to do that. Let's look at the other leg. We're still given the 60 leg, and we're told to find the 30 leg. Well. I divide by the square root of 3. Now watch this. If I take 9 
and divide it by the square root of 3, I'm doing something that I just did. I multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3 to get rid of that. And 9 times the square root of 3 is 9 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. So I get 9 square root of 3 over 3. And just like my 18 over 3 could be reduced, I can reduce 9 over 3. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so I get x to equal 9 divided by 3 is 3 square root of 3. Now, I know that both of those problems took a long time. But mathematically, they're not overly complicated. Hopefully, you understand how to reduce radicals. Hopefully, you understand mathematically what occurred here when we went over it at the beginning of the lesson on how to multiply and divide by radicals. And I want you to take that now, and I want you to actually try and solve for x and y in the second problem. Pause the video and do that now. OK, hopefully, you were able to solve or at least identify how to solve the second problem in example two. Now, if you look at this problem, we can first identify that it's a 30, 60, 90. And we can notice that of the sides that we're given, we are only given that leg. We're told that it's the square root of 3. But what's more important is identifying which leg that is. It is, a, is it the 30, the 60, or the hypotenuse? Well, the way that you identify that is by going across from it and seeing what angle is across from it. And we have the 30, which means that we have the 30 leg, which means that I can come up here and use these cheats to solve for both my hypotenuse and my 60 leg. Now, the way that I solve for my hypotenuse is by multiplying by the square root of 2. All I've got to do is multiply square root of 3 by the square root of 2, and I get my hypotenuse. All I have to do to solve for my 60 leg is by multiplying by the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives me my 60 leg. Now, if you have not first identified how to do that, or maybe you had a hard time just figuring out what information we were even given, right now, pause the video and try and solve it. But if you have solved it, let's look and see if you got the right answer. You'll notice that to solve for x, which is the 60 leg, 60 leg, all we had to do was multiply by the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. The square root of 9 can be reduced to, the, to 3. That's how we solve for x. Then if you look at y, y is the hypotenuse. How do you solve for the hypotenuse when given the 30 leg? You multiply by 2. y equals 2 times the square root of 3. 2 square root of 3, that's how we solve for y. Maybe you need to pause the video, go back, and try those problems on your own. Either way, solving for a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90 is sometimes easier or faster than solving for the Pythagorean theorem. You'll notice in, in this most recent problem, we were only given one side. Well, the Pythagorean theorem requires two sides. So you can't use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x and y in this problem, and you don't know how to use trig yet. Remember, trigonometry deals with right triangles when only given one side or no sides. So, in order to solve these problems, like the ones that we've done recently, you needed to know the 30, 60, 90 cheats and the 45, 45 cheats. What I'd like you to do now is I would like you to practice on these three problems. And I'll even help you. You'll notice that the first problem, we'll label it number one, it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. How do we know that? Because here's a 30 degree, here's a 90 degree, and if the inside of a triangle adds up to 180, this angle has to be 60 degrees. Well, we just got done solving two problems that were 30, 60, 90 problems. So you can follow the same steps that we use to solve this problem. You can use the same steps we use to solve this problem. Look at the second problem. We'll label it number two. This problem is a 45, 45, 90. How do I know? Because this angle is 45, this is 90. And if the inside adds up to 180, this angle has to be 45 degrees. And you can use this to solve for x and y. If you look at the third problem, we'll label it number three, it's exactly like the first. So identify what you are given, and then figure out 
Am I given the 30 leg? Am I given the 60 leg? If I'm given the hypotenuse. Once you identify what you're given, then you can figure out what to do to solve for the missing pieces. What I would like you to do is go through those guided practices right now. Try and solve them on your own and then bring them to class to see if we did it correctly. And then we'll do some homework in class together.